free enterprise fans and welcome to a runner's review of the finals game two between Invincible and nervous mccallan uh my name is gamut 017 i will be the moderator for tonight uh demarine 2 is handling our restreamer and in the booth with me i have both Invincible and nervous mccallan say hello guys cha-ching 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 oh i'm sorry that's just ended walking in with his trophy uh, you sure that's not Rivers McCown wearing his Magi Tech armor? Uh, <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> uh, pretty good. Excited to get a good run back of this match and see just how things flip back and forth. It was the uh, the the one where we were pretty much neck and neck for most of the time, even though we were zooming back and forth and leapfrogging all over the place. So it'll be cool to see how it played out again. Yeah, I want to point out that I have not watched this race at all since it happened. Uh, I was very busy over the weekend, obviously. Uh, I think, and then said, I think, I think you said that you only watched some of it. Uh, is this I the broke it. You've watched all the way from. Uh, I broke it into a couple pieces, and honestly, was distracted by just other things going on, other people doing stuff, and worrying about am I actually going to be able to fall asleep tonight? You know, things like that nature. So, uh, uh. A lot of the nuance, I'm sure, has escaped me, but that's why Gambit's here, to make sure that we don't miss any of the nooks and crannies. Yeah, but I've got a nice list put together to kind of guide you guys through and see what your thoughts were in certain situations. Uh, starting at the very beginning of the seed with your party names. Um, I know once we get started, we'll be able to see them a little bit better, but you guys want to go through kind of why you chose to, to do some themes with your party names? Uh, it's fun. It's fun. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure who exactly did it the first time. A lot of the time, I would just use silly names anyway and just leave the defaults because it, it eventually gets hard to come up with enough fun varieties. But I went with the Muppets. Muppets are good. If you don't like Muppets, I I don't I, I don't know what to tell you. Excuse me. Excuse me. I'm standing on River's neck right now. I mean, it did work out that way, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Better pick a different theme song next time. <laughs> um, so I guess to try to come up with what we're thinking right here, we had a magma key start in the first seed as well. So that popped out immediately. Uh, we both uh, felt behind after the antlion gave a pan, I think. And neither Absolutely. of us picked it up in time. <laughs> And that definitely adjusts my routing this seed a little bit. But one thing that everyone's going to see that, Rivers, you did this most of the seeds this tournament. And that was, you, you did the early Baron loot check and character check. Even though in like Zima Zone 2, you had, you know, really kind of like tried to push people away from that, including me. I quit doing that check a lot because of your advice. Uh, I still like fading it now, but there's some really good reasons, I think, here in the flags that we use to do it. Do you want to go over some of your thought process on why you really like uh, doing that early on the football gauntlet? Well, number one, uh, I think the character flags really play to the setup a lot better. Um, you obviously want as many characters as you can get early on. Um, you also are getting a lot of these treasures that now uh, you won't actually be able to sell for that much. So uh, what I want to keep really matters a lot more to me. And in this case, um, I feel pretty comfortable saying that I always wanted the third character before I even start chopping, before I even think about uh, how the meta this is going to play out. And hey, seeing that boss there, that helps me out too most of the time. So Baron, not really a tough check as far as time anyway. And this is just became kind of my default for, for this flag set for sure. Gotcha. And that also explains a little bit, like, I'm with you on knowing those characters soon, uh, especially if I have a Tella who lets me exit out of places. Uh, I talked this over with Blaze a few times, that if we have a rougher party start like this, and you'll see me do this in a minute, I love going to Hobbs early, even if I've not done a lot of looting, just to know, who am I looking to find loot for? You know, is it Rosa? Do I need to find a good bow and arrows? Is it Kane or Sid, and I would like to find an axe? Is it one of the kids who wants a dancing dagger? Is it... Dark Knight Cecil and I better find the Black Sword before coming up here. Things like that. Yeah, it was uh, it's one of those things that... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you watch my Game 1 and Game 2, my openings are very, very similar. Um, and, and I just... I think kind of the way I wanted to play this against Envenerable is just that uh, 
you know, I've seen people take that lead for granted, the, the one game lead for granted, and I wanted to push that as far as I could. So I got a little aggressive in the seat on purpose. And my feeling, of course, is uh, kind of echoed by what you said earlier, which is uh, you're standing on my neck. Well, yeah, I want to stand on your neck. I want to break <laughs> the neck right now. Let's end this thing. <laughs> Which is funny, because I, I said this in some of my interviews, that in my round of eight and quarterfinals matches, when I got up, uh, round of eight is quarterfinals, round of eight and semifinals, uh, when I got up the one match, I was willing to play a little more conservatively and let my opponent, you know, be the one who has to make the gamble that's less likely to pay off. So it's interesting that we each took the separate tack there. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. And then I was like, oh, interesting. Well, I guess I can be aggressive then. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I want to point out, Rivers, is this is something you've been doing a lot during the tournament, especially with early underground access, is making the save outside Feymarch and going to loot uh, the entire uh, Feymarch uh, as you go down. Is that just something that's just better loot down there, or is it something different that you're thinking about? Yeah, it's about T-Pro, um, and T-Pro also giving you better items to sell early on here. Um, I don't think either of my fame arch has really paid off that well in these seeds, but like generally over the course of time, I found that if I have a start like this, especially, and you know, you come out with like a vampire, you find a big bomb or something like that can really change a lot of your early game routing. And then, yeah, in this case, uh, I think I only got the vampire out of here, but this is my preferred way to loot when I got that magma keep rather than diving into uh, uh, the Damsian basement. Yeah, and I completely agree with Rivers. Uh, what my usual MO there is if I do have that early underground access, uh, I'll loot the first two rooms, and if I do find the warrior's chest, I'll go ahead and reset and full clear. Uh, if I don't, then I'll be very torn about whether or not to open the chest en route down to the bottom, because uh, I hate having to walk through and reloot all four of those over again. It, it, it's interesting, like, the mood that you get in, whether it's, am I going to push this and try to get one more piece of loot, or am I not going to risk it? Uh, there, of course, Warriors on the first floor. Easy decision to make either way you're slicing it. So do yeah. you want to talk do you, do you want to talk a little bit about what seeing Rhodes did for you on the seat early on? And then, because I didn't see that for a while yet. So I'm going through this still kind of thinking, oh, man, I've actually got to uh, to play this a little bit riskier. And you actually going to see how that worked out. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I love seeing Rosa just... I mean, for obvious reasons. I mean, she's the best white mage in the game. She has the aim command, which enables so many things in so many places early on, just because early bows are, they're trash. And being able to set that accuracy to 255 makes a huge difference. The magma key, of course, means that we have probably an elven bow underground and charm arrows somewhere above ground. So she can actually contribute to meaningful DPS, even as a relatively low-leveled white mage, which is, it, it opens the seed wide up. Uh, here, you'll though, you'll see me in a minute thinking, oh, hey, remember match one when that pan was an antlion? Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, I, I cut you off, uh, Gambo. You were gonna say, you were gonna ask something. I was gonna say, uh, how excited were you, Rivers, when you found that curse string immediately in the, the Fame March uh, armor shop? Well, I mean, I definitely, on these flags, prioritize the shopping early, um, except, and this is something I actually picked up from Moonblaze, uh, realizing that you don't really have to go into Tamra every time. Uh, so I, I really was excited to see that early on only because of that. That meant that I was going to save some, some you know, landing and, and some shopping there. Uh, seeing these Cure Threes in Dwarf Castle, I'm also, you know, thinking, okay, well, late game is a little bit certain at this point. It's more just about how we're getting there. Yeah, everyone may love the Job Dwarf check, but being able to bypass Tamra is such a huge time save on these flags. And uh, although this is game two, not game three, game three, just because everything fell, got to skip so many shopping, so much shopping, so many shops, that uh, that seed, which always feels good when you're having to play at this level. And as we see here, Rivers, you continue doing the looting check, getting through all of Dwarf Castle, catching up those. And Invin, as you pointed out, this is where you said, wait, let me do Antlion, because Spinning Antlion didn't work out last game. Let's see what's down here this time. Yeah, just how miserably behind I felt in game one when the pan was there, and how it caused me to really gamble on Earth, because I, again, 
studying your opponents on this, I knew Rivers uh, was kind of fond of do going Lunar Subterrain on these flag sets. I'm like, well, if I got that far behind by passing the pan, let me hope that the Earth bells me out. Uh, and on game one, it definitely didn't. See, that's interesting because my 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 own philosophy was not at all about <laughs> th thinking that you had to go Lunar Subterrain to win this stuff. Um, <laughs> I mean, like it, it expressed itself that way in, in some of these races for sure. But uh, I, I, I don't think that that's been my general operating philosophy so much as one that I took here out of aggression in some of the cases. And then also just the first seat, I think uh, it was it was something where there was too much opportunity to pass up. Yeah. And also, I mean, with that Conquer the Vanilla Masamune altar uh, being in play, it's one of those things where target your required objectives and then if you get something that leads to another objective fantastic so i get it it was more probably must be more confirmation biasing part of it but it still it still played out just based on what i'd seen it definitely was a good thing for you in Ben, with the darkness crystal being there to immediately go to the moon and get a fourth character whereas rivers going ahead taking care of hobbs and picking up that rosa yeah, and at this point, um, you see kind of the divergence. And for me personally, the way I played the seed, you know, I come in here, I have, I think, two big bombs still. I have a vampire still. I feel pretty comfortable about most things that I could fight at uh, at ordeals. And I know that getting Tell his spells is going to make a lot of things easier. Um, it just kind of, uh, the way that the seed was playing out, I felt like, I should take this step first and you know if in, in the unlikely event that something good is in it in, in it land that really alters the party dynamic at this point um you know i'd always come back and yeah just just kind of the way that uh being aggressive played out for me and expressed in the seed uh, I, i've got to ask is, is that mouse pointer from the vod or is, is that our restreamers because i'm about to start acting like a cat and start pawing at my monitor i believe it's from our restreamer i think uh our restreamer Demory is worrying taking care of making sure everything is perfectly centered and well put okay. on for all our viewers i was just making sure because again that the, those feline reflexes are starting to be like i'm just uh, either way <laughs> sorry demi i was just checking So yeah, Edge on the Moon. Um, what were you thinking when you found Edge on the Moon, Evan? Uh, I felt pretty good, but also there was still the concern that after what happened to both of us in Game 1, you may have done Antlion remarkably early as well and been in the exact same boat. Uh, but with him, I knew not to be scared of ordeals for the most part, which honestly might have been wrong, as we'll, we'll soon see. Uh, but it immediately made me want to uh, delay Fable, see if maybe I get a pan on ordeals or somewhere that I can handle with this edge, and more importantly, get that Tella online. Yeah, they're really... Uh, actually, this is kind of an interesting parallel to draw here, so not to pat myself on the back too hard. But um, I remember in highway to the zima zone one the very first race the top eight race had a vowel at the uh the first spot on our deals and i didn't have pick up the palum and i faded the entire thing and won the race but <laughs> in this case it was it was one of those things where seeing the, the way out of the seat knowing sirens weren't going to be for sale anywhere um i think both you and i immediately upon getting that that edge getting getting seeing the rosa seeing that palum are you know it's like 90 percent we're do we're demachining this thing oh absolutely and honestly that's just one of the other things that i'm really thankful for how you've reworked the economy and how the flag sets have changed you know slightly like we can't recreate the exact flag sets and settings that we used back in zima zone one but honestly if we had the exact same economy setups and flag setups year after year, uh, the tournaments wouldn't be nearly as interesting. There wouldn't be new things to learn, experiment with, learn the lay of the land. And so your spearheading that between seasons has been so good for making these even more fun to play. So huge shout outs. Now I want to point out, this is actually one spot where Invin, you took a slight lead on Rivers, whereas Rivers got into this fight a lot earlier than you did. Using Edge, you were able to kill the king off before they woke up and saved yourself a bunch of time on this fight. 
Are you a bad enough dude to fight your dad? Uh, Ed, Edge is. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you, you get Edge, you're the overworld. It, it, it's, it, you're good. <laughs> uh, well, again, you say that, and then, you know, Tornado Bikini shows up from behind, and you start to worry a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, from my own perspective, I'm I'm totally fine bleeding that time if this is something that's easy and, and you know, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not worried about that kind of time loss as a general thing. Just in this one case <laughs> happened to bite me really hard because this is one of the bosses that I can't touch with uh, any of these characters' attacks or any of my item spells. Yeah, Invincible, you actually did a very interesting uh, idea when you unequip Edge and dart his short swords to try to get the damage going. What was going through your mind then? Uh, we had the magma key start. I wasn't all that worried about it. Like worst case scenario, I can find middle blades if I middle blades or dancing daggers or mute knives if I really just need something to give him. Uh, but on S Pro, you can find up to long blades in a weapon shop. We had access to all three underground. I figured I'd find a replacement for him and that I wouldn't have any trouble getting through the crystal chamber anyway. So I wasn't that worried. It was mostly, uh, I really hope that I don't have too much damage left here to plink out with these iron arrows because 22 damage at a time ain't the dream. Now, one thing chat pointed out during this part is you did have a thunderclaw in your inventory as well. So Edge did have a weapon technically if you wanted him to use it. <sighs> claws, I, this is the same reason I tell people to sell their cat claws. Claws have attack power zero. They are zero. <laughs> they are they are more akin to spells than they are to weapons. Don't don't think that it's actually giving him that big of a a, a bump once you're done with this fight. Yeah, and I guess um, just to kind of talk about my play, my me being aggressive there even more. Um, the there's what like three key items we could have gotten out of this check that actually lead to a character which is uh, uh, Sand Ruby, Hook, or the Darkness Crystal. And everything else that we could possibly find here, or, or package, I guess, yeah, for, uh, everything else, you know, take some time, take some fights, etc. So I didn't feel bad fading it on that basis. And you play the odds sometimes, and you get owned. It, it happens. <laughs> well, I would argue that you could also get some items that, although they don't give immediate character access, can still be transformative. Uh, I mean, you get an Earth Crystal there and you find a heroin rope and an Artemis bow for Rosa, and who cares about Edge anymore? But... Uh, <sighs> there was an Edge in this game? <laughs> Maybe I'm expecting a little too much of that uh, of that Troya treasury. I've heard it's entirely too underpowered. You're not going to get anything good from there. Can you uh, Can you turn that up a notch? Uh, at this point, and then you got through this Valve Alice, you get into the crystal room, and you get, of all things, a glass hat. I'm sure you were feeling that getting the telespells were more worth it, but what was going through your mind when that came up? Uh, I don't really hate uh, a glass hat. It does enable some cheekier things to be done when you do get down to the Fame Arch with those bosses. Uh, a back road character can withstand... Few punches from Asura, not as many from the Leviathan spot. Uh, back road with that helmet on, uh, so it enables a few things that you wouldn't normally do, but it's not thrilling me either. The big deal here is just like you said, getting Tella online, access to the weak spell, access to stone, things of that nature. And at this point, Rivers, you're giving your big whale, you're about to head up to the moon and get your edge. You already had the knowledge from doing Fame March earlier that we have Golbez in the Leviathan spot and Water Hag at Ashura. Was there any thought of uh, possibly going back to do those anytime soon, or were those still just kind of last things on your mind? And we lost him. <laughs> I didn't think my question was that bad. Uh,. Demarine, do you want to pause the stream and see if we can get uh, Rivers back? Or do you want to just roll with me and Gambit? Oh, he's back! I'm not sure if he heard that full question, Gambit. So you may want to give it to him one more time. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. Sorry. It's okay, Rivers. I was asking, um, again, getting the, the Lunar Ninja. You actually already had the knowledge from being in Fame March about the Golbez and the Water Hag down there. Did those... 
if you have any thoughts of going back down there to take those anytime soon, like as soon as you could, or whatever's kind of last thing on your mind? So, okay, I <laughs> I actually thought about both of them at this point. Um, yeah, and you see me go back to Fey March, and I'm, I'm thinking, well, I need either levels or weapons at this point. And if there are good weapons in the shop, I'm going to take the weapons. And if there is a, you know, a way I can get some levels on these guys, then even better. So, unfortunately, uh, you know, the Thou thing, it, it's already in my mind. I can't, you know, I can't let it go. I've got to get this. <laughs> I got to get this this tell online no matter what. So uh, this was just the easiest way to go, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, after I after I do the the fabul, early fabul checks and they wind up with nothing, uh, I'm, I'm definitely thinking in my brain. Well, I've got to I, I, I got to find a way to get past that now, no matter what. Yeah, in the meantime, Invenerable, you turn around and do the same thing River said earlier, looting Dwarf Castle, trying to get some extra gear for your characters. Yeah, I uh, I don't hate the uh, the Dwarf Castle play when I have Tella. Uh, I hate having to walk out the entire place. Uh, but also, Escorter makes us all desperate for some extra cash. I know right now that I need to be able to afford two weapons for my edge since I threw all the short blades and I've not found anything better. So I'm definitely farming out a little extra money here to make sure I can get him online as my primary physical attacker. So if I can talk a little bit about what I'm trying to do right here, because I, I know that I need levels. Um, so I know that this ghost fight, I can, I can throw the mute with Rosa right away, uh, finish it. And so that makes it that the only thing I can do in the script is attack. Everything else is a spell. So I'm trying to throw the mute out and then use the blizzard. What I had forgotten was that I used the blizzard <laughs> at Ruby earlier. So <laughs> I get here and this is kind of like a waste of, I think, uh, what, a minute maybe? Because I throw the big bomb instead. I'm like, oh, well, that's not going to work, is it? <laughs> yeah, chat pointed out almost immediately, as did uh, Maggie the Cat, who was doing commentary, that we thought that flame healed the ghost. And as we'll see in just a second, it does. Yeah, I mean, that was one I was pretty sure on, but, <laughs> you know, you you always want to try these things just in case you get lucky. Um, and yeah, uh, unfortunately, not only did I eat a lot of time there, but uh, throwing the curse ring on Tella actually slowed me up a little bit uh, on my next couple of fights as well, uh, where maybe it shouldn't have. And Venerable, you can actually go down into Troma and validate the scene, taking a look at the temp drop dwarf. Uh, yeah, I, I wanted the loot anyway, because again, want to power up edge. I wanted to just check my weapon shop sequentially here, because if the long blades are in Dwarf Castle or Tamra, again, we have the edge, we have the powered Tella. There are a lot of Fame March fights that I can deal with here, but I want edge to be properly equipped if I'm doing it. Uh, so that's why I elected to check all the weapon shops on the way there instead of diving Fame March. Uh, if I'm going Fame March first at the start of a seed with an early magma key, doesn't matter as much, but we already have a character who is begging for those S Pro weapons. So doing the full circle around the underground seemed seemed fine. Just buy the Shrukens, McCallan. Buy the Shrukens. <laughs> I, I always forget those are a thing. I, I always <laughs> I get a shuriken, I sell a shuriken. That would actually be oh. Wait, you can use those? Those are just money to me. <laughs> I know. I completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I actually was trying to think of my plan here, and I actually haven't thought about the uh, the uh, <laughs> the darting solution yet. So that didn't pop up my head until I was actually in the fight, and then I was like, "Wait a minute, I got the slumber sword," and you know, you'll see it in a little bit. But but yeah, I was uh, uh, looking back at it now. You can see all your mistakes in twenty twenty hindsight, and you're just like. By the damn shrugan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was actually shocked to see how much damage the Slumber Sword did. I know that someone a while back had mentioned that they're a really great price-efficient way to buy a stack of throwing weapons for Edge, but it didn't really connect until I threw that one at Val and saw you know nearly 1,500 damage. So definitely something to look out for on these uh, S Pro flags in the future. Uh, so Rivers, you got the Luka key very early on. Uh, Invincible, you just get here. Either of you have any thoughts of even checking what was down there right off the bat, or was that just one of those? Okay, that boss is way too fast, way too powerful for this team. We're gonna fade out for a while. Well, I have the cursed ring, but um, 
the damage that this party, like the the, the damage output that this party had with no berserk at all, um, no real way to actually cast spells. It just seemed like no matter what you would do there, it'd be really long. So yeah, that that didn't cross my mind at all. Yeah, and the only thing that I I do love getting an early magma key and Luka key combo, uh, but not for the sake of checking the boss. I like it for doing a very quick door grind with a star veil to get uh, any black mage online, whether to grind Rydia up to get virus if I don't have any good summons, uh, absolutely to get virus and quake on Palum. Uh, or to get you know, even Burst and Blink on Rosa or Porum. That's what I love going to an early Sealed Cave for, but here with Edge, didn't really feel that relevant. Yeah, and, and when you do that, normally it's because you don't have a Darkness Crystal already. Which <laughs> a Darkness did. Crystal, tell it. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And you have no <laughs> other good options. <laughs> now, remember, if you go to Fabul here, you go ahead and do the Sheila 1 check in defense of Fabul, get a Tiara, which is going to be great for Rosa, and then the Legend Sword. How are you feeling right here? Um, Like I had done a lot of work and gotten nothing for value. <laughs> Thanks, I hate it. <laughs> That's how I was feeling. <laughs> but I mean, you know, obviously it is required and yeah, it, it's nice to get some objectives stuff on the board. But really at that point, it's more about uh, how I'm going to get past that Valvolus. That's like driving every decision at this point, just knowing that Palm's in that Baron Inn and I can slingshot him up immediately. Yeah, in the meantime, uh, Invin, you go ahead and you find the Long Blades and then the Curse String and the Fame Arch and then go back to the save point to heal up and take on that Water Hag. What was your thoughts? Uh, I So, I'm well aware that there are a lot of bosses that you can kill at low levels that eat up a ton of time on your clock. Uh, Water Hag, even at root spots, not really one of them if you can anchor properly get Blink up, and just get those three hits in. Uh, so you saw this also in game three. I made a similar play against the uh, the Dark Imps, although that was more for the XP than really hoping for the long shot. Uh, but it's easy experience. There's a chance that it gives me something that blasts the seat open up against someone as great as Rivers. Uh, so I figured I'd do it. Uh, Golbez, contrarily, one of those fights that, although free with enough Star Veils here, is very slow. Waterhag, three hits you're done and it was very very friendly as you'll see with uh its choice of targets here in just a moment yeah, yeah the, the 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 gold best spot in leviathan doesn't do a lot of magic damage right that's what it is yeah right. yeah uh pk who was also the other commentator for this match actually pointed that out where you would have to have extra damage against Golbez in that spot because he wouldn't be able to kill himself with his own spells before the star Bells ran out yeah, it's a lot nicer here if these two swap and Water Hag is at the Leviathan spot, because it's still punching harder for this low-level team, but the Asura spot's magic is so high that it's very easy for Golbez to knock himself off there. Now, remember, as you come back down to the Fame March a second time, just for a shopping trip, which kind of confused our commentators, thinking you were going to at least maybe make an attempt at that Water Hag. Yeah, I thought about it, like I said, but uh, uh, I really just <laughs> was more interested in... in trying to fight off that valve and anything. I knew that long swords would give me some kind of credibility in that fight. I didn't know how much. Uh, it's not something I really practiced uh, in depth, but uh, I figured they could at least pierce through this through this and make it, you know, doable. Uh, and then like halfway through the fight, I remember, oh wait, I can dark things. <laughs> oh, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> like drain is a spell, dart is a command. It's not just for spoons and excals. And invincible for you. How do you feel seeing that Zeus Gauntlet from the Water Hag fight? It was fine. I mean, again, I know I keep contrasting other matches. Like Game Three, the Dark Imps gave a whole bunch of XP and a Protect Ring. That gave twenty thousand XP and a Zeus Gauntlet. A uh, little bit of time loss, but the levels are going to help me get through everything pushing forward. And that Zeus Gauntlet combined with those Long Blades, I know Edge is about to tear things up. So, pretty okay with it. So actually, uh, let, let me let me talk about this too. Um, I told I said earlier the uh, the cursed ring cost me time. This is one of the fights where putting that cursed ring on tail cost me time because I totally forgot that it was on when I was trying to do that grind early on, and so I never get a blink in this entire fight because Tella never gets a turn. I think 
<laughs> and sometimes you have them equipped, set up for something else, and forget, and unfortunately, that's how it happens. That is a fun little thing to do other places, though. Like, if I have a character who I kind of want to live to get XP, but has no meaningful way to contribute to the team, uh, like a baby-level Palum going into a Dwarf Castle fight or something, I do love cursing them and throwing them out of anchor position, just because, yeah, it's going to take them about 50 ticks to get a turn, but that's okay. <laughs> you don't get in our way. Let, let the rest of the team, you know, get down to business. Now, Venerable, this is something I wanted to bring up to you here about the Baron Inn fight. You set up the weak on the Dragon Form of Dark Elf before you had had him changed. Did you already, were you counting the damage and knew he was about to, or? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that spot has, what, 4,000 HP, and it's something like a 1,600-2,400 split between the Elf and the Dragon. I don't remember the exacts, but I, I knew it was about to change. It's not really like you have to count like thoroughly when you've got edge either. You just kind of know that it's going to happen pretty soon. Yeah, there there are places and fights where you do need to be cautious. Like there's certain Calbrena fights where if you don't have a sweeping mage, you really and you have to beat them with just melee attacks. Then you do want to pull up that chart. You want to get the exact HP counts. You want to keep track. Right there, even if the weak had whiffed, big deal. It's dying soon enough anyway. Edge is edge is doing it. In the meantime, Rivers, you get through Valvalis and get your glass hat and your telespells. Invincible, you're heading back down into Sylph to do Sheila 1. We have actually a very good question from chat from Dark Paladin uh, asking if, how you guys felt with uh, all the seed having early underground and darkness available. I mean, <laughs> I, like it doesn't really register to me, I guess. Like I hadn't even thought about it until this moment. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, I've probably practiced a seed a night since this thing started for, what, three months. So I've probably done hundreds and hundreds of seeds by now, and nothing really phases me in that way that much anymore. Like, the only thing that would really have affected me deeply on a seed like this would have been the, the, the Ogopogo Gauntlet or whatever that was, the thing where the red bees can just destroy you. Like, that, that, that would be annoying. But everything else, I felt like I was pretty prepared for. Yeah, and uh, for my part on it, I, I didn't think about it in the moment either. Uh, in retrospect, I am probably a little thankful for it. Uh, there are a lot of opponents that I love having a hook route race against, just because I know that I can eke out an advantage there. Rivers, you are not one of them. So having open and varying routing available to both of us, I feel definitely gives me, you know, better opportunities to to find something going on whereas if we were both funneled into such a linear route i think i would have had a much rougher time in this uh in this trio of matches well as you guys are crisscrossing i do want to uh thank the original restream team of this match which was dathis on the restream i was actually doing the tracking and maggie and pk did the commentary um, and I do want to thank you guys for being open to doing this runner review of this match. This was one of the best matches of the tournament, let alone the finals. So thank you guys for being here. Yeah, I suggested this the morning of the the, the game three, actually. And uh, I think Emmett, I think you said, uh, well, what if what if game three is better? And I was like, it's probably not going to be better. But okay, if it's better, we'll do game three. That's fine. But let's do game two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agreed to it instantly. Uh, these runner reviews that we've gotten a lot of positive feedback from. A lot of people have enjoyed watching them. Uh, and yeah, to, to get to sit down here and go over one of the finals matches, absolutely uh, delighted to be here. Thank you uh, for suggesting it, Rivers, and thanks to all the Restream teams who made the original match and tonight happen. So at this point, uh, we have what? No, 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 no. We, got, we, we basically have we have six objectives because it's the forge stuff but uh the the lower battle boss we already had access to so at this point coming 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 out of the i guess first fear of about for a better term we have like two of the six done and we have access to lower battle and mazamune altar but no grind yet so i mean like i don't know how you were feeling in event but when i when i when i got that i was very heavily just thinking well I want to cut this grind a little bit short 
and, and do the Mazamune thing because that's going to get me enough levels to be fully powered anyway. And, and then when I actually got to the grind itself, I was like, you know, I like Nuke, though. Nuke is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's kind of funny because you... <sighs> like, there's definitely an acceleration thing to consider there. Uh, always, am I wasting time by doing the excess grinding? Because it all comes down to what your bosses on the moon are like. If you end up having relatively free bosses that just give you the XP you want, if it's something that you can put a status on and life glitch or life two grind, then you waste a lot of time doing the giant grind. Uh, but on the other hand, if you run into really rude bosses, all of a sudden you're saying, why didn't I get to level 52? Oh my God, what have I done? And right now we're both shopping for various things, I think. I'm looking for life potions, I believe. Uh, and I am, I think I already have a few succubi in my inventory, but yeah, you're looking for the life potions, maybe the ethers, uh, just to make sure that your team can uh, take care of the grind, which is coming in fairly soon. Yeah, I'm also I'm also checking that bed, knowing that Edward is a requirement, thinking that uh, you know if, if if Sand Ruby is something that is required, I want to know about it early. That's kind of a key point too. Mm. And in inventory, I see you going here checking this cave for the vanilla D mist, finding Payman and immediately resetting back out. Yeah, and that was something lingering in the back of my head the entire, entire run was, where's D-Mist? Where's D-Mist? Because uh, I'd, I'd had a practice match, uh, not match, but a practice seed with D-Mist at CPU behind a pretty rude elements boss. And so it's one of those things that's always lingering until you, until you spot it that is this in some weird place that, again, Rivers, you mentioned that you were willing to go a little more uh, a little more, what's the word? Aggressive? <sighs> aggressive, thank you. You're willing to be a little more gr aggressive on the seed. So there was the thought of, well, what if he is willing to go take a quick, like, what if he's taking a peek at the Magus Sister spot? What if he's using this one game advantage to commit to a giant play? What if he is going to find a hook and immediately make the, the run to see who the King Queen Evelyn fight is? Uh, so Demis was one of those things that was just in the back of my head this entire seed. Yeah, I guess I guess the the thing about committing to giant with this is uh, you already know that you have to go back to the moon anyway. So like I, I, in, my, in my head, like did I did it cross my mind? Did I check the boss? Sure. Was I going to commit to it? Probably not. <laughs> this is a boss up here. It's where it's not necessarily difficult, just time consuming uh, in the form of my and friends, as we'll see in just a second. Uh, and it was interesting to, to watch it live and see neither of you decide to take it on. Yeah, it's, it's not a difficult fight, but it is annoying. Uh, that spot, the way the algorithm divides things up is that it has like 110,000 HP combined because each element's form has a huge pull of its own. And what that ends up meaning is that Mylon there will have about 65,000 and then each of the gas will have entirely too much for a single dose of quake maybe even a single dose of medio to take out they might even pass the ten thousand mark uh so it's gonna be a slow fight and you're gonna eat so many lightning one counters that even the thought of doing it after leveling just thoroughly unappealing did not want to commit to that yeah my 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 basic um meta and, and i'm not saying this i've always followed this whatever but uh my basic line of thought with uh if I'm going to clear giant is, is there multiple things I can get out of this? Is there multiple wins basically? Is there both a character and a boss that I could find? And in this case, we had found the officers early. The only thing that was really there that could be there and, and win the seed was Edward. And if you commit to that early on with this party, it's not going to take a terribly long time, but it will be annoying. And eh, I, I don't know. It, it, it did not seem worth it to me. Yeah, and it's also another, uh, and this is another thing that definitely makes a difference between the 1v1s and big group free-for-all plays, is that in a 1v1, if you do make a gamble on a play like this that takes, you know, four or five minutes of your game time, you also have to consider what are you going to try to do afterwards to make it back, or are you going to try to hope that your opponent makes a similar time loss? And that's one of those situations where I couldn't see an opponent making that similar of a time loss 
Uh, like, there are definitely things that any rabbit holes that anyone can go down. But this is one of those that I figured was a low percentage chance of Rivers finding a way to lose that much time across the entire scene. So, okay, let me direct this to you, because I think this is kind of an interesting one. And given I, I, I'm, I'm not sure how far ahead you pull here, but I, I, know, I remember somebody saying that you did leave this before me, despite me starting it earlier. Um, what, what kind of is your grind setup mentality for, for this team machine? Uh, well, let me look at the team right quick. I need to see my party order. So as soon as I get into the fight, I can give you a better idea. Uh, one thing I have started doing is buying a Hermes sandals because there's nothing more annoying than when you have speedy characters and Tella gets out of turn when you're hoping to cast a week. Uh, come on, where's the fight? Where, where's the fight? Okay, there we go. Um. Uh, So yeah, my Palom there is still at base level. I don't know if I'd put the Curse Ring on him or not, uh, but the general rotation I like to get going is uh, Punch, Weak, Life, Ether, or Cure as, as befits the next turn. Uh, well, wait. No, that isn't quite right unless I do keep the kid up. It, it's hard for me to go back and look at a clip and tell exactly what my mindset is. I am always thinking while I'm walking to the next place how I want my turn order to look. But as far as how I wanted this to play out, I couldn't have said exactly certain uh, looking at it after the fact. But I'm sure within a couple of minutes, we'll see. <laughs> okay, well, generally speaking, I like to go to battle speed 2 on these fights now. And it's all about... I think better better odds of, of getting that double. I'm not saying that this is like thoroughly proven, like by science or anything, but I know that Exodus has said in, in the vanilla speedrun it does help him out a lot going to BS2 as far as getting these doubles. And uh, unfortunately, this doesn't work out for me at all because this fight not only goes slower, but also um, I have uh, Mr. O'Neill up here missing uh, great bow shots like a jerk, and uh, my my back row. Well, what ends up happening is I wind up on a cycle of twos rather than a cycle of threes, and that's kind of where you don't want to be, and kind of unfortunate, but uh, something that just kind of came out of that one first missed shot. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, that is one thing I do consider, though, every time. I think about who is going after Tella, and is there a chance they're going to miss? Uh, I like to have either one of my heavy hitters there, who has a whole bunch of melee attacks, and there's no way they're missing all of them. I like to have Rosa with an aim command. Uh, if it is Edward, Palum, or Rydia, uh, either Palum needs a good spell to cast or they need a dancing dagger. I'm, I'm not trusting any of those wimps with lesser weapons. I want that hit rate. And that's another reason why frequently I'll buy that sack of Thor Rages in case of an Odin or a Kenatso situation through the rest of the game. But then I'll use them here because I also get really annoyed when I try to bop the searcher and I get a whiff. So everyone will see me in these fights using those that sack of Thor Rages to summon the D-Machines as well uh, instead of just relying on the fight command. Also, um, one thing that's different about this from Vanilla um, is because we had that AA flag on, Free Enterprise um, will always have the center character be five uh, relative agility, whereas in Vanilla game, Cecil himself will always be relative agility five. And so in the vanilla grind setup, we actually have, I think, RA2, RA2 on Fu and Edge, and then four on the ladies. Whereas in Free Enterprise, it's a little bit different. So not exactly as easy to set up that way. Um, I guess the question I have for you, actually, is do you consider any of this agility stuff at all in any way when you're trying to plan out your grind fight? Uh, a little bit. That is why I buy the Hermes shoes and why I... I don't always remember to do this, but if I have any of the big agility boosting gears on, if I have an Artemis bow or a heroine robe, things like that, I try to remember to take those off because I know if I leave it on, I'm going to get a whole lot of those turn jumps that just throws my order off. Uh, so, yeah, that that's the bulk of it. Uh, and, of course, if I have a situation here where we have both Tella and Edge... I love those Hermes sandals. They kind of bring Tella up to the edge situation. So you're not having edge jumping in line a whole bunch. Uh, but I will always end up forgetting, oh yeah, I have an Artemis bow on, I have a heroin robe on. And then all of a sudden, Rosa or Porum or Rydia is getting three turns for every one of Tella's. And that's always irritating. Yeah, this is one of the things what I think um, 
if somebody like mapped this out was willing to do like 10 hours of work on it i think that's something that really would benefit the community a lot and kind of one of those things in the back of my mind is like boy it sure would be nice to dig out of enough free enterprise holes to be able to get here <laughs> And actually, Dark Paladin bringing up another topic in the chat, asking if Hermes reduces the cast time of week, because that was one thing I tested back when we first got that Lua script working that gives you the ticks on everything. Uh, when Kirch and I were doing a lot of research into timing at Zeromus and everything. And in addition to the ATB, I, I do believe it reduced the, ca the, the cast delay on spells as well. So maybe that is actually a, a legitimate use of Hermes. If you're having to cast a whole bunch of long delay spells maybe that's another good way to get a uh, utility out of it let me let me dog my own play real quick here um so uh, you see that i that i start getting a little greedy as far as uh opening these chests i'm kind of looking for for like a stardust rod is what mainly i'm hoping for here um but but also <laughs> the reason it was really bad was because i never put the curse string on tella so i set myself up thinking okay if i grab this uh this one fight, the the uh, the last arm chest here, uh, has good tier seven odds, so that's nice. But uh, the way I set it up was for Palm to be able to nuke right off the bat, and that didn't happen. So that cost me some time here too. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah, with mage heavy teams, uh, I'm less inclined to loot. Uh, admittedly, having double long blades on edge isn't the ideal. There's a lot of stuff that that he can do better than that. But if if I get a mage team online and have even like middling melee gear to get me through uh, Valvalis Light, which we already did anyway. Uh, I'm far less likely to, to make checks, even in place. Like, the giant is ridiculous. The loot tiers are great. The last arm chest, great odds of a tier 7 item. But it's one of those things where, also, I'm already feeling a little behind. Like, again, that, that water hag fight, didn't expect you to necessarily make that play. And uh, I just wanted to get this done and keep on rolling. Yeah, I, th I think I would definitely call this conservative play for me, which is kind of out of whack with what I've said earlier. But in the moment, it was one of those things where I was like, it really would be nice to just find a big stat stick here and, and make sure that uh, everything on the moon becomes really free. And I went up the, the fraud out of it, I think. So that wasn't bad, but not what I wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus five is nice, but charm and stardust, that's where it's at. Uh, one thing I want to point out is, um, Rivers, you ended up getting just a soft from your D-Machine grind as a, an item drop. Inevitable ended up getting an Hourglass 2. It was probably a 3, actually. I think those dropped 3s. Oh, baby. <laughs> Can't buy those. Yeah, must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> must be nice. <laughs> I mean, clearly you just have to keep killing more and more D-Machines until you feel the moments right. I actually don't know if that came into effect in this. I, like I said, I haven't watched it yet, but yeah, that was that, the the soft reward was really it. knowing that you can get sirens out of there, knowing you can get preserves or or not preserves, sorry, uh, hourglasses. Uh, that was that was pretty disappointing. Yeah. Uh, clearly, we just need to turn off the J drop tables next time. Uh, let's nerf Edge back to being a garbage character where he belongs, and uh, let's not have to worry about. Uh, getting those goodies, right? Right. <laughs> uh, one more question for you, Invinerable. I saw at the very end of the grind, you used a kamikaze on Edward to kill the searcher. Is there a reason you wanted to leave him dead even knowing you had a curse ring? Uh, yeah, because even with a curse ring, Eddie can get so fast, and I wanted to make sure my Tella could actually stay relative agility one the entire game. Um, I hadn't found any gear that would put Eddie into a real good damage position, like any kind of Artemis Arrow and Elven Bow, sure. Come on, Eddie. You're on the team. Pew, pew, summits Aromas. Uh, as it stood, I wanted to make sure I could get those utility spells off with Tella when I needed them in the fights I needed them to. Uh, Blink is my new favorite spell in the game. Uh, just throwing that out there. Blink is best. And having two sources of it. Uh... And also, even with the party order I'm going with here, the general idea I have in most fights here is for... Palum to nuke or hit something as an elemental weakness. Tella either Zerk's Edge or Blink's Rosa. Uh, and then whatever I need after that happens. Because uh, Tella definitely doesn't belong in the front row. Rosa doesn't really belong there either. But Blink, Blink, Blink is good. 
And then chat noticed a big divergence that happened right here after the grind. Rivers, you went straight up to the moon, which is what you did in game one. So kind of following that. And inevitable, you decided to go ahead and finish the Earth Treks. Same thing you did in uh, game one. What was your thoughts on these checks here? Uh, I guess for me, um, my thought is that of the two checks, I know that if I happen to do the Mausoleum Altar, I won't have to go back to it ever. Like I might have to pass it as I'm getting if I don't find the pass. But other than that, I'm, I, I know that Tower there's still the tower key live. So that's kind of driving my decision between those two. Knowing that after you do that grind, it's probably one of those two decisions you got to pick. And so I was just like, I've got nuke. Um, pass can be anywhere. Why kind of put it off, especially after game one when Envin was talking about how, you know, that, that was kind of an influencing decision for him. I was like, well, it can be anywhere though. So let's just go here see what happens. And conversely, we talked about this earlier tonight in the runner's review, but I had interpreted River's play, which was probably more directed by the objectives he had seen in prior matches than by some affinity for the bottom of the moon. But I had seen the LST play a bit, and so I figured, let me counterplay that by staying on Earth. This is an objective. If I get the pass, I'm willing to make the bum rush to the bottom of the moon and full clear it. Uh, and moreover, if not, and I can somehow clear all these chains and finish the seed, with that vanilla Masamune altar, you get to save so much time walking back and forth uh, and even deciding how you're going to clear those LST7 bosses. So I uh, was hoping to cut down on things and all it earned me was a double dip into Lower Babel. So hooray, strategy. <laughs> yeah, so even you get uh, objective number one marked off taking care of the, uh, the D-Lunars. Not really any good key item, any good uh, item at all, really. Meanwhile, Rivers, you find the Dark Camps down here at the Masmune spot. Yeah, our glasses are, are kind of a nice thing to have, but stone, um, pretty effective too. And of course, having having spent the time to pick up the stupid Lilith rod, <laughs> like I'm like, well, okay, if I pick this up, it has to work, right? This is, has to, it's not gonna be one of those things where it misses and then I'm just casting weak in a depleted state. No, 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 stone definitely hits here and thankfully it actually did. <laughs> and you end up picking up your own Zeus Gauntlet from that fight, so. I would like to point out that with that rat tail that I'm walking out, uh, it actually caused me to Let's revisit this later in the scene. Sorry, I just hit my microphone. It caused me to make a mistake and an oversight later in the seed, but one that actually ended up saving me some time. So when we do eventually do something with that rat tail, remind me to come back to that, if you don't mind. All right, I have made a note of it, and we will remind you when we get to that point. Uh, meanwhile, Invincible, you're going to go ahead and make the Dwarf Castle check. I'm assuming they're looking for that Edward at the current moment. Uh, yeah, it's a key item check and a character check. Let's go ahead and see if we can knock it out. Uh, I'm definitely still at this point, even with all my spells, not thinking about Golbez. That's a slow fight. But I figure with how the team's powered up now, this should be pretty quick. And then, Rivers, you find the evilest of walls down at the D-Lunar spot, the Ribbon Altar. Yeah, it's a pretty bad spot, but I mean, once you've grinded like this, you're not too worried about it. Like, you know, but you got to throw the blinks up in a hurry. And I was a little bit slow there. I got a little bit lucky as far as damage, but I wasn't really actively concerned about actually winning this fight. It was it was more just I knew that it would take a long time. And on that note, you know, one thing about us having these really strong teams that we have done the grinding, we have powered them up. I'll, I'll, I do see... A lot of people get a little annoyed, like, oh, well, doesn't that just trivialize everything? Well, the thing is that it's not just a race between me and the monsters. It's not a race between Rivers and Evil Wall. It is how each of us are going to leverage our party to clear all these fights in our way as quickly as possible. That's where the competition is coming in. Like, yes, anyone can take this team and beat these fights. But the question is, how are we gaining and losing on each other while doing them? Now, Invinerable, what was your thoughts when you saw that Foo here in Dwarf Castle? Yay! <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's fantastic. I, I kept that Edward weak. I get to ditch him now. Uh, and I have an extra dose of Nuke 
Cure 4, Blink, all these goodies. It, it, it was good. It was real good. Yeah, so not the Edward we were kind of hoping for, but definitely someone you will take. Um, but that gets you through Dwarf Castle, and if I remember correctly, there's not really much value coming from this check. Well, there's a pan, right? That's what it was? Yeah, yeah. Sheila doing us dirty. <laughs> but the food is nice. The food is good. And honestly, if, 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 I, if I had done that check and I saw that food there, like, I wouldn't have... It, it, like if I if I could have seen this in advance, what, what, what came out of Dwarf Castle, I wouldn't have done it because the food doesn't matter at this point. We've got a big party already. It's it's more just um, you know, kind of the objectives playing rather than the the key items and the character collecting at this point because you've got three characters that can finish the game with easily. So, Rivers, you took care of the evil wall. You ended up getting uh, what we nicknamed in chat the Tower of Power as the tower key and a power robe from the Riven spot. Immediately moved over to the White Spear Altar and found Pale Dim. Nuke, nuke, nuke. It's a good spell. <laughs> yeah, that's, there's not a whole lot of, of, of added uh, strategy to go here at this point, unfortunately. Once you have Palm at these levels, he tears things up, and that's kind of how I approach the entire moon. Oh, and I will say that the other great thing about getting Fu was that I did get to bring Statler and Waldorf back together. Uh, very happy the seed let that little naming convention come into play properly. So I do appreciate that part. <laughs> didn't, didn't even have white for this fight. You hate to see it. But anyway, well, you got that pan from Dwarf. You immediately go down to the Sylphs and play Whack a Monk. Yeah, you gotta you, you have to follow a pan. If you get a pan, there are two key item checks here. You gotta do it. Uh, the one thing I will say that I did was I went ahead before I entered the cave and walked on all those damage tiles, did all my re-equipping, all the party organizing, thinking, you know, if both these spots are, are garbage, well, at least I will save myself. Uh, a little bit of healing and a little bit of walking by resetting back to that save point. So, eh, it's about all I had going for me after getting the siren and whatever this hunk of junk's about to be. And when I see the standard me now, I'm like, well, it's, I'm glad I checked Kaipo because now I don't care about this at all. I can just safely ignore knowing that it's another edge and it has no meaning in my life. <laughs> And remember, as you immediately start heading back toward the Wyvern Altar, which is the next logical point, you get a Charm Rod from the Pan Check, and Invin resets out immediately. I do love the plus, the, the it's plus 10 at that point, an additional plus 5 over what I have equipped, but I just didn't think it was worth walking through, having to heal after all those damage tiles. My kid has a freaking Elven Bow equipped, which means that the re-equipping is even more annoying. I, I just didn't think it was worth the trouble, and I was very disappointed in Sheila that, that afternoon. Yeah, Sheila 1 was great value with the Legend Sword. Everything else Sheila had was nothing. Yeah, and then uh, I told you a long time ago, my superstition is that when, uh, Yang, when, when Yang is not in the seed, Sheila doesn't deliver. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And every every time now that I have a party with Yang in it, and I go to check it, I'm like, you know what Rivers McCown always says? And... Uh, Oh, let me make sure I, I, I caveat this. That is not developer talk at all. I have no access to that information. It's just superstition. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, superstitions are fun. I like them almost. No, I definitely like superstitions more than I like memes. Uh, so, yeah. I, we, I think I may start keeping a tally. Like, okay. Sheila value with Yong? Like, is it, is it lovers on the rocks tonight in Fabul Castle? Oh, interesting hourglass. Good thing I needed that now. <laughs> Don't you know you're supposed to get those from your D-Machine grind? What are you doing? I tried, man. I tried. <laughs> now, one thing I want to point out here, Rivers, is you finish that fight, you get the hourglass, and you immediately exit out and fade the remaining two moon checks, the Pale Dim Spot and Cave Bahamut. What was your thinking there? Um, I mean, that's been a meta for me for most of this term, and honestly... Um, I think when you're trying to decide how you want to win seeds, um, you have to kind of separate out where you're willing to lose. And I was willing to lose at uh, not Cape Bahamut, but but uh, the Pale Dim spot for sure. 
that one's going to be the last one I check on pretty much any of these, just knowing that uh, it's a it's a it's an annoying jog to get to if you have to reset for whatever reason. That's that stinks. Uh, there's also the part where if it's something nasty and it wipes you, then you have to decide if you actually want to do it at all. <laughs> and, and then even beyond that, just the extra time involved in getting it. It's it was always the one when I was doing my analysis on this stuff that I came back to thinking, if there's one thing I want to fade, it's that. And, you know, I probably run, you know, like I say, 100, 100, 120 of these seeds over the past three months. I've probably seen value there uh, less than 15 times. And, and most of the time that I've actually done it, <laughs> uh, it, it happened in, the, in, 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 these, in this tournament. So I, I understand uh, why people were upset about that. I understand why people are like, he's fading it. Oh, is he thinking about it? No, I wasn't thinking about it at all. <laughs> I was mainly thinking, I'm skipping this always. You see, that's so weird to me because, and of course, this is my confirmation bias speaking. I didn't break up spreadsheets or anything, but I had had a lot of races, notably one against PK uh, in the round of 32, where I cleared the entire bottom of the moon and nothing there. And then it turned out that Pell Dim Altar had my goods. I had had several practice seeds where I had, and this is why on the slag set in general, you saw me doing a lot more earth checks than in the bottom of the moon. And I'd had bad luck on LST7, but I'd had kept finding value after value at that Pale Dim altar. Uh, I'd also noticed your uh, penchant for fading it. Uh, had seen that I believe that's what cost you your game one against Moonblaze Wolf. Uh, and I committed then and there that I'm not leaving the moon with. That may have been Cave Bahamut in that match of Blaze. But I told myself then and there that even yeah, if I do bottom the moon first, I'm yeah. taking care of those other two altars before I leave. That was Bahamut, yeah. But but that, I think that did cost me in one of my races at some point for sure. Maybe it was the penguin, right? The penguinator race that I lost. I don't remember. But but yeah, uh, upper moon, upper moon and me in these flags is is one of those things where it has been a conscious effort. Uh, I'm not trying to hide that at all through my play. And uh, if somebody wants to go there and try to beat me, then I feel like they're gonna you know take on a lot of time. And if they get lucky with those two spots, they get lucky with those two spots. I'm, I'm not going to be upset about it. Now, Venerable, when you get down here to the LST, you immediately go to the White Spear Ultra first before going to the Ribbon spot. What was your thought there? Uh, well, I still need, at minimum, two key items. Uh, I cannot get... Well, okay. I could theoretically get everything from Ogopogo if it is a character check that also leads into a key item check, like if it's Earth Crystal. But even if I do get the Earth Crystal, I can't see myself fading the entire rest of the bottom of the moon. Like, I'm at minimum full clearing the bottom of the moon. If I get an Earth Crystal, I might fade Pell Dim Altar in Bahamut, but I'm committed. So I might as well do this in the logical order do things here, cast the warp spell to get that nice big shortcut coming back up to the Wyvern altar. I, uh, yeah, I was not going to go straight to the Masamune altar because I knew I needed more than it could offer on its own. And then Rivers, when you got here to the tower key, you find Dr. Luge here. What was your thoughts as a spot that's supposed to be nice, easy 400 HP, all of a sudden is going to be a nice little cutscene. Well, you want to trim as much off that cutscene as you can. I don't think I was successful. I think I missed a run buffer or wasn't paying attention enough. But uh, got the second one pretty clean. And yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm not even thinking about the bosses at all. At this point, it's all just how I want to run the metagame because um, I'm definitely following up on the tower key obviously knowing that that is number one and, and then from there on i'm also thinking okay well let's say nothing turns up here uh what's next and am i gonna play the odds that uh dwarf has something or maybe they march has something or am i just gonna go right back to the moon and go against kind of my my established meta and <laughs> this is this is one that I'm just thinking about this this entire like ten minute segment of the run probably.
Yeah, but you, you, you take care of that tower key, you come down, down and you're going to end up getting rewarded with the Earth Crystal. Uh, how did that kind of play into your decision making once you saw that? Uh, see Earth Crystal, chase Earth Crystal. I had nothing left I could do. Uh, I got the rat tail at the top. Um, everything else was either those top two spots on Moon or, you know, uh, Dwarf Castle or the Fae March checks. So at this point, I, I, I'm thinking I'm committing to my moon, my moon value first and foremost, no matter what. But after that, then it becomes kind of a debate, and I'm kind of hoping that there's like a long chain out of this. I mean, you just listed a lot of things, but you didn't include always sealed? <sighs> oh yeah, that's a thing too, isn't it? <laughs> You'd have had that lovely defense sword, and then not demist. Oh, I went, there. Honestly, don't, I went there, don't worry. But yeah, yeah. I didn't think about it in this moment. <laughs> It was so... I, I'm actually kind of glad it wasn't Demis there, because thinking about what that would have led to, ultimately... Mm, no, thank you for... Thank you, Demis, for hiding behind my last actual objective. That's right, Invincible. You never actually got the chance to turn in the Demis check to see what lovely item you get from that. Uh, and Rivers, when we catch up to finding where Demis is, will definitely be able to show us what lovely stuff Rydia's mom had. Yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, fading the entire treasury, I think, was the only play you could make, uh, knowing you're trying to win the race. Uh, people have been talking about how overpowered the treasury is for a while, but even knowing, even if there was like a Mazamune there, you've got a long, long power Zeus, uh, you're pretty set. And honestly, with this party, you're doing reflex traps anyway, I feel like. So it wasn't really a, a, a thought in my mind at all about that. Long, long power Zeus. Power Zeus. Uh, yeah, same. I, I'm pretty sure I end up skipping it as well. Uh, just the the team is already good. You could find a Stardust Rod. You could find more Rune Rings, Sorcerer Robes, etc. But you're already good enough to beat Zeromus. And who needs that? Who needs that inventory management? Nah, we're good. Yeah, you guys both faded that uh, treasury, and then. Rivers, going into this fight without saving, what was your thought there? Just not really afraid of anything that could be here? Um, well, I knew I had the Cursed Ring Telus set up, so I wasn't worried about uh, Wyvern or Golbez in, in a meaningful way. I knew I'd get, I could survive it either way. And, and just playing the odds, uh, turned out that it was CPU and got to swag media with everybody. Yes, I know chat was very happy with that swag video. And get rewarded with objective number four, finding the Edward. How'd you feel at this point? Hour five in, four objectives down. I mean, just, you know, how game one turned out basically was uh, I paid attention to my checks and and <laughs> went, went, right, went there right away. Uh, got double value. So I'm hoping, of course, for double value out of this. And then... Uh, there's the moment where we see who this boss is, and I'm like, oh man, this is this is really turning out incredibly well. Um, having two checks here to get the the last item that I need for a go mode. A lovely Miss Dragon hiding herself at the top of the Tower of Zot. Um, again, makes for a very quick, easy check as soon as you defeat her, get taken back to Baron, and can immediately just fly right up to Mist and. See what you get. You know, Palm of Nuke's pretty good. I'm starting <laughs> to understand why all these cool kids grind. I mean, you know, if you just uh, reduce that delay involved with the Meteor spell, maybe we get more of it. I mean, it costs a lot more, but, you know... Swag rocks for the fans. Listen, you want to make those Hermes shoes a thing, so go on, go on with your bad stuff. You can lower that cast time to like ten. <laughs> what gives you gives you the package? With getting, getting Edward from the um, Tower Zot, no need to check for that Edward. Going straight up to check that Demist and. What was your thought when you see what she gives us? 
Um, I don't know that I can repeat that on air, honestly. <laughs> no, it was it wasn't that bad, but but obviously not what you want to see. <laughs> and I love that. So <laughs> that's side by side. Our last two Moonvale, both of us getting such beautiful rewards from our combined checks there at the same second. But at this point, I'm I, I'm like, OK, well, where where am I going to go? And my first thought, of course, is um, I know Invent's probably done at least Dwarf Castle. So I wanted to check that. Um, I know that I want to do uh, Always Sealed because that's my thing. And I know that if it's nothing important, I can easily reset on that right away. So that was first. And I think uh, I think Dwarf was second after that. And again, at this point in the race, we didn't know it in chat yet, but this is kind of where everything turned in Invenable's favor, was he goes back in to check the Pale Dim spot, making it clear that he's going to full clear that moon first before coming back down. And again, it's kind of remarkable how a bit of this comes into play just based on our practice seeds and how our confirmation bias comes into play. Uh, it's one of those things that there there are certain other randomizers where whenever there's a new version, they'll roll 10,000 seeds and say, hey, here's where everything is placed. Uh, we don't have that, which I kind of like both sides of. There's both the mystery, uh, but there's also succumbing to your personal confirmation biases. And this is definitely a situation where my confirmation bias of frequent value at the Pell Dim altar, the Murasame altar, helped me immensely uh, once I got past that round of 32. Yeah, but it made you work for it with Ogopogo here. How? What you? What was your thought immediately when you saw him here? Uh, I'm okay. Right there, I was very annoyed that it hit Rosa like that. Uh, but I definitely, I had mentioned earlier that my party setup was usually, let me blink Rosa or Berserk Edge. Right there, I really wanted to get Edge Berserked to get those actions buffered because of how Ogopogo I don't think takes any breaks in its really rude script. Uh. It was annoying that Rosa went down. I was glad I had Fu. I was glad I had camped out before coming down here. I knew I could get through this fight. It was being a little bit of a butt, but overall I wasn't too worried, more just a little annoyed at how the actual routine played out. And in the meantime, Rivers, you go ahead and make your Dwarf Castle check at this point. Yeah, at this point it's like, whatever. Oh no, guards frightening etc i mean there's real at this point when you're kind of going through the seed <laughs> like the the actual boss aspect of it stops being a thing that matters to you almost and it can lure you into some uh some false senses of security even and knowing especially you're going down here you're just like okay well fine it's two guards see you later uh, Invenerable, when you saw Baron Key here, did you have any thoughts of just saying, okay, the heck with uh, K. Muhammad, let me go immediately back to Earth and chase this? And a little bit, because again, it, it is a spot that gives you two key item checks and a character check. Uh, but to refer back to Rivers Prospectus earlier in the event, that as much as you can, you want to play the long game here. You want to reduce the amount of time you spend running back and forth between all the places, you know, flight time, whether in your airship or in your whale. And I just wanted to go ahead and knock the moon out while I was here. Let's not worry about coming back here again. Maybe we find a pass, even if the bearing key is wrong. And then we get to save four and a half minutes walking back through the moon. Uh, instead of having this cave Bahamut lurking in our, uh, in the back of our mind the entire time, you know, where that mist dragon still is for me at this point. And then Rivers, when you saw Fusuya and Dwarf Castle, what was your thoughts? Okay, why not? Come aboard. You're fine. I, I don't know. There wasn't really a whole lot of deep thought at that point. Like I said, it was the party was mostly set, and it was more just like, well, I, I guess the fans will not get the Edward finish they wanted so badly. I'm sorry, but got to go, Eddie. Yeah, so at this point, Rivers, you were pretty much. Uh, you cut out there, Gambit. Ah, sorry about that. 
I mean, I agree. Uh, Rivers was very pretty, but I think we need a little more info there. We talk pretty one day. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. So at this point, you get the pan. That's pretty much the only check you have left. What, what was going through my mind when I saw the pan? Um, like I guess I would... I guess I would say that when I saw the pan, I wanted to follow it, obviously, but uh, didn't want to be followed. <laughs> and I think from there, that's kind of that's kind of the main decision point of this race is uh, which which side I want to take between uh, Fame Arch or those two moon checks. Yeah, but you definitely go chase that pan, which is the Again, the, the play you have to make at that point after sitting through Dwarf Castle getting it, because you never know, that could finish the seed for you. Yeah, it was... Um, I'm not sure if this if, in this if it was this one or... No, no, it wasn't this one. It was, it was the other one where I felt that the race was over. But th at this point, I, I'm thinking, um, you know, if it's here, the race is over. And, you know, I'm going home... A happy boy, but uh, unfortunately, you know, Yang stayed out drinking last night, didn't decide to come into the seed, and Sheila took it out on me. And Invenerable, you finish Cave Bahamut to get that hook, immediately go check that rat tail, and what was your thoughts as soon as you turned it in? Uh, so at this point, my primary mental focus is on finding that adamant. So I'm hoping the rat tail gives it. I had made the save earlier, so I wouldn't have to move my hovercraft again, and I could just go target Baron. Uh, and this is where that rat tail saves me a little bit of time. I don't think it saves me more than what the ultimate difference in the seat is, but I am so zeroed in on the key item part of things that I completely forget that there is a character check in Cave Eblin. Because normally when I'm thinking about Cave Eblin, it's, oh, can I find a cursed ring somewhere, please? Or can I find a good character? Whereas this team is loaded. This team is ready to go. And because my plan is, okay, turn in the rat tail. I don't even turn in the pink tail. I immediately reset and fly to Baron if that's not it. And I completely forget that there is a character check to make there and just continue down the rest of the uh, the key item chains, the rest of the seed. Uh, I did peek after we were all done uh, and discovered that it was a duplicate palum. So it saved maybe like uh, a minute 20 or so of running through the cave and resetting out upon seeing him. Uh, but still a huge mistake, but one that because I was targeting the key item aspect of the seed was understandable and also when you're at the as we're about to be like the hour we're gonna be at like hour 22 or so i think when i do find the adamant you're in panic mode at that time when you're up against someone like rivers like you're like oh god oh god oh god where do i go oh i have to double dip lower but ah and it just completely blanked on me so odds are if i had got single dipped babble i would have made that character check uh after completing uh, this part that leads to the adamant. So, I don't know. Lose it, gain it in one place, lose it in the other. And I, I don't really know how to evaluate that mistake and how it helped or hurt me. But I still felt like a big idiot when Zilch messaged me after the race and was like, hey, you know there's a character there. Yeah, I think in chat we were wondering if uh, you were going to go check that character or not since uh, Rivers had already found Edward by the time uh, he gets his hook, which will be here just momentarily. Uh, Rivers, question for you. What made you pick K. Bahamut over Pale Dim Spot? Well, like I said, um, I know the Pale Dim Spot takes longer to get to as far as uh, any kind of potential reset or, or wipe or anything. And I, I think that at that point, Pale Dim is the place I least want value to be. And unfortunately, I know that I don't want to do any of the Thamar stuff. So that's probably where it's going to be. Uh, but, uh, you know, value in Cape Bahamut is a good meme and it's served us well over the years. Doesn't mean necessarily always has to be true. Yeah, because both, both of you guys completely faded at Golbez at Fan March and Rivers in your case, you completely faded at Fan March altogether. Um, I assume you guys were just both hoping beyond hope that that was not going to be required at this point, uh, hour 20 into the seed. Hey, I... 
spent uh, I went down there twice, okay? I bought those long swords. It got what it deserved. <laughs> And yeah, I, I committed as soon as I did that the first time. I'm like, no, I'm not going to go back there for Golbez. That's the thing I will fade this entire seed if need be. Uh, but I wasn't even thinking about him at this point. I was thinking, where's the mist dragon? Where's the mist dragon? Did I leave a D mist in the giant? Is there a D mist at the giant with everything I need? Is there an Edward at the end of the giant with a D mist blocking an adamant? Like, it is just nothing but panic at this point and like the roaring in the back of my head while the front of my head is still thinking, how can I clear these bosses as quickly as possible? But there was still that just roaring doubt in the back of the head at this point. And another question for you, Venerable. I know a lot of the times in these seeds, you, especially with late Baron checks, you'll go down to the Odin spot first before taking on the throne. Is there any reason you didn't do that this particular time? Uh, I, you may have been looking at seeds where that throne was already required, or it may be a situation where I still need more checks, maybe? Here, I think there was still the active desire... Oh, no, I can tell you why. I can tell you exactly why. And I know that you're talking about the final match there. Uh, here, it's because I still need the character. Uh, if I only needed the key item, I would go to the basement throne first. If all I needed was an adamant, I would check it. And if so, good. We don't fight this. We get out of here in case it's the alt gauntlet, for instance. Uh, here, though, I still need Eddie. Let me do the check that is both character and key item all at once first. And also, I did get this bearing key from a spot that I knew Rivers didn't like to check. So mm, focusing on it seemed logical for that reason as well. Uh, Rivers, you just got the bad news that the rat tail is not going to be worth anything here and that paleo spot's required what are you thinking well i don't know but it's required yet it could be in fame March still but yeah i definitely was thinking okay well i mean this is annoying but if i'm going to win i'm going to have to do this spot i feel like people will play to tendency on me on that and and yeah so went here obviously and um you hate to see it. <laughs> um, I, I guess to talk a little bit about setup here, like the reason that this fight goes bad is because I did not heal Rosa properly. I thought I did. I was in the menu. I cure three up Foo, but I didn't do Rosa. And this is one of those bosses where the HP based damage can eat you alive if you aren't fully prepared. And uh, sometimes you kind of take that risk when you're trying to play fast, trying to get past a, a player as good as Invenerable. And uh, yeah, it just kind of happens that uh, she gets wiped on the uh, wave, and then Fu gets one shot first turn. I mean, I've got really nothing I can do. I think. Yeah, this this Ogo fight seemed to really have your number for the first part of it before you kind of got into a rhythm. Uh, meantime, Invincible ends up with the Twin Harp from the Odin spot and immediately uses the Black Chocobo and Baron flies up there. What are you expecting coming up here? Uh, I mean. Cave Magnus had value in the first seed we played. At this point, I did get a Baron Key, again, from that Pell Dim spot that I know my opponent doesn't like to play. There's no Dot done yet. Uh, have to pursue it at this point. Hope for something good. Uh, if it's not here, I mean, we may have already lost anyway, but this is where my path led. Let me commit to this check, and uh, yeah, let's go for it. But it should also be noted, I think Flurry did the, the time checks on this. Like, I think I lost two minutes on this fight compared to Inven. I mean, Flurry's got these really impressive little spreadsheets where he where he calculates all the time spent. And uh, I think I lost two minutes here. So this wasn't like a race deciding thing. It was more just um, trying to play too fast. And I think it was more, for me an accumulation of mistakes, and then also that grind, I think, and then one hand only too. Yeah, just having to walk it twice is rough. Absolutely. Yeah, but in the meantime, Invincible treating us to some music. We're going to be quiet for just a second uh, to get an encore of this music. And actually, it looks like our researcher says it's not going to be able to switch over right now, so we're going to have to wait till Rivers gets there. 
Wow, Demarin hates the fans! <laughs> she hates the fans! She's mad there's no Porum in the seed. Uh, if Porum were here, we'd get music twice, right? Right. Well, we never saw the seventh character, so Porum could technically be hiding on the giant. <laughs> Do you want to know the actual answer to that question? <laughs> Not really, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, Indra, what did you think when you saw that blue robe pop up and you knew immediately that's Gauntlet? I th I <sighs> It's annoying, but one, the music plays longer. Two, I have my team anchored correctly to where Paloma is going to sweep every fight before the enemies can get a turn off. Uh, I do queue up the second virus here just because I don't know if a virus split five ways, even at his level, will handle it. It handles it. Uh, so I wasn't that worried. I knew that the gauntlet fight was going to go as fast as it possibly could. I was going to get first turn. I was going to kill everything on either first spell or second spell. I didn't worry about it too much. It's a little annoying, but it would have been a lot more annoying to have had to have done this fight at level 18. Yeah, this is... And, and I think I had the same setup, basically, where Black Mage was, was up first. So, I mean, of all the places you can find this gauntlet, this is not a tough one, and this is one where you feel pretty happy about it. It actually kind of makes it easier than the normal boss if you have a mage heavy team like we do just because it, it doesn't get the Dark Elf magic resistance. Uh, if we had a boss that had that, Edge still takes it down, uh, but the order here was just well-suited to the situation. Yeah, you, literally, you made this fight look incredibly easy, and I know chat was very happy with how long the music got to play in this particular spot. Yeah, I'm excited to learn what that song was. <laughs> So you get through it, you get the item, and it is the value you are looking for. What's your thoughts right here? Dude, where's my Edward? Where's my Edward? Is my Edward in the giant? Is he behind the D-Mist? I've still not seen a D-Mist. Where's the freaking D-Mist? Uh, okay, let's go Let's go chase the other item we got from the moon. Because I know Rivers is going to the moon. I know he's getting the tower key. Let's go follow it. And again, mine completely blanked on the fact that I had a character hanging behind the hook. It is gone at this point. My entire mind is filled with thoughts of where's the Earth Crystal? Where's D-Mist? I personally think you should have just gone right to the giant. I mean, that's that's a character for sure. You know that it's there. You know that Edward's there. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, that's actually what I'm planning for. I'm sitting here thinking, okay, if this path, if this key item does not lead to it, where, like, if I get a dead end and Earth Crystal Package are both behind D-Mist, hidden somewhere rotten. Where do I want to go? Do I want to make the giant play for two shots at D-Mist, plus a shot at Edward? Do I want to go chase the hook route? Not thinking about the character. I'm thinking about a D-Mist at King Queen Evelyn. Uh, or do I want to fight that Golbez in Fey March? Like, I'm not even thinking about any of that other stuff right now. Not even, like... It, it's weird, the stuff that my brain zeroed in on, and the stuff that it kind of disregarded. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, thankfully, D-Mist at CPU wasn't gating anything. And also, this is a side effect of a seed I practiced the very night before had a gating D-Mist at CPU. Confirmation bias coming into play again. Something you've seen recently that was just terribly rotten, just lodging itself in the side of your head. And uh, it definitely impacted how I played this seed, not seeing a D-Mist even at this hour and a half mark yeah i mean the other part of that though is you know we we know that we we're both in giant by that by now so i'm not even sure like how you approach that mentally like is it well if i go there first then i know i know that my opponent probably didn't go through two fights or if you if you think about it the other way you're just like well i'm fading that for sure because there's no way my opponent went there and did those two fights <laughs> And honestly, I think that speaks again to the, the fun and the quality of the 1v1 format that we've been going with this tournament. Uh, in a in a four-way, someone someone's making that gamble, especially you know if it's in a situation for your where you're for all the marbles. 1v1, you, you have to be a lot more particular with how you want to gamble. If you want it to be a full-fledged gamble or kind of a half gamble, and uh, those are 
it, it's a lot harder to make that play. So it's kind of weird. You'd think 1v1 would increase the variance, but it also flattens it out a little bit just because though there are risks you can make, you don't want to make any of the completely out of the park for the fences ones. Yeah, if you take a risk, you want that risk to be the uh, the two minute risk instead of the eight minute risk. I think that's the best way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah, well, Invincible, you actually had some pretty good routing coming from that twin heart, taking the black chocobo back to Baron where your airship was, right back underground the forge, and then immediately to the tower for the tower key. So, not having to go back and forth or do any extra um, flying around on that front. I'm actually curious about that, because a lot of people think that the Black Chocobo thing is just for swag, but if the next, like, okay, if the next place you're going is to Zot, which sometimes you are, sometimes you already have it planned, Magnus, Zot, back to Baron, go somewhere. But if that's not guaranteed, and you have somewhere to go underground or back to the moon, I love it that the Chocobo takes me back to Baron, and then I can go somewhere from that fairly more centralized location, just closer to where all my other vehicles and portals are likely to be. There's also a party of it just like showing it off, I know. <laughs> there is, it's fun, and I kind of like the cho Black Chocobo music as long as we're not playing on the vintage flag. Oh my god, my ears. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's fun, but I also sincerely like the location it puts us out. Oh, and another thing too, as we have seen, it can sometimes be tricky to catch a black chocobo in the chocobo village. It's a lot easier to grab that one in Baron. Just smaller area for it to run around in. Can't get away from you. It's not going to have three other chocobos running an amazing, you know, D-line. O-line? O-line. I know a sport. Uh, so <laughs> there, there are advantages to it. <laughs> That's one sack by the chocobo. <laughs> no, I... I uh... I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Chocobo Forests, too, uh, in this format. And I think, you know, between the MP refill and the uh, extra chests, uh, the, the T-Pro bump there, like, they're actually a lot more fun than they used to be, rather than just, like, something that's in the game just hanging out. Oh, yeah, like, no one did MP refill in, I think, Zima Zone 1 with Sophie or Zima Zone 2. Uh, admittedly, we kind of started going there for the T-Pro loot, but at the same time, talking to the Chocobo is much faster than dealing with a cabin or a tent animation. And if you get a good piece of gear at the same time, heck yeah, let's go. So, Invincible, you got the Earth Crystal from the Tower Key. You immediately went to chase it, still fading that Golbez completely. Well, yeah, there are two characters behind this Earth Crystal. I don't know if there are any characters behind Golbez. <laughs> yeah, at this point, that Golbez is like ancient history for both of us, I think. And then remember, as you get the twin harp here from Odin's spot, and what's your thought when you see that? Um, I've lost the seed. <laughs> That's pretty much the, the short of it. Um, I, I I really thought I needed something to pop up right there to uh, win, and uh, you know, getting getting that, knowing that in you know five minutes I might be out of there, knowing that I'm definitely going to chase it. I, I kind of figured that it was. Uh, between the Ogopogo and some of the earlier mistakes that I was probably behind and I probably had lost at that point. Uh, at this point, I know chat was still thinking it was anyone's game. I think at this point, most of chat had gone over to saying Invin was in the lead, but it was still close coming down the stretch here. As Invinable gets into, beats the first boss and Zot, finds the Edward, uh, still has to take out the boss, and remember, you're heading over to take on the gauntlet in uh, K Magnus. Yeah, but there was like no chance that Invenerable was going to drop a fight to Z with, with uh, you know, obviously, I'm assuming that he did D Machine. I don't think anybody could really see this layout from an advanced perspective and not D Machine it. Um, it would be very difficult to win the seed if you didn't, I feel like. But, uh, Knowing that he probably did that, knowing that he probably took things more cautiously than I did going to the moon, knowing that he doesn't have an Ogopogo wipe on his resume, like in my brain, I'm calculating all that. And I'm like, yeah, this is probably going to be like a close loss, but we'll see. Yeah, and at this point, I'm, I'm curious to see my menu before we go to Zoromas, because I know a little while ago, my Palom, I think, was already at level 59. Uh, he had gotten far ahead because when I did my D-Machine grind, it was based on getting Rosa powered up 
but Palum was getting slingshotted. So he definitely ended up with more levels than he needed. And he might even be like level 60 coming out of here, just because, again, Rosa was the basis for my grind. Palum getting double was gravy, gravy, nuclear gravy. Yeah, but we'll be quiet as Rivers gives us the encore music, this time actually on stream. Switch it to the other one now, Demi. Switch it. No, no, don't do that. But, but it's funny. As an addition right quick, I do get thankful that the package and the Mist Dragon are both behind the Edward at this point. Uh, just because there's always that concern that my opponent could have found an Edward somewhere else. And knowing that at least both those things are through it is a minor bit of relief. Uh, again, completely blanking on the fact that uh, I've forgotten the hook route. <laughs> Yeah, but it's at this point, as in Rivers is working on taking on that gauntlet. She'll be through it very shortly. Then you go ahead and enter your Z fight, Invincible. And what's your thoughts? Hour 30 into the seed, knowing you're going up to Rivers, knowing that, you know, he could dot down at any second. What, what's going through your head? Uh, just pedal to the metal. Let's do this quickly and efficiently as possible. Uh, feel a little bad because I know I wasted a little bit of time both on Water Hag and on going through Lower Babel twice. Uh, on the other hand, I had seen multiple matches, Rivers' willingness to forgo that held him altar spot, which did end up being required. Uh, so it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Uh, there's stuff I've wasted time on, stuff that I may have gained time on. All to worry about right now is this fight and getting through it as quickly as possible. Speaking of this fight, as the Z flags came out in chat, we were all wondering what interesting Z sprite will we have to follow up uh, the one from game one. And as we'll find out very quickly, we thought we were done with the gauntlet. We were not. The uh, as it appears, I love this so much because I, I believe that at some point I'd even suggested uh, that it would be really funny if all the monsters of the gauntlet could be put into a sprite together. And initially it wasn't possible because of palette restrictions. Uh, the officers and guards, officers and soldiers fight have, no, not officers. Captain and soldiers have one palette. Gargoyle has one. The weeper water hag uh, imp captain combo has another that they pull from. And to get them all into one sprite was a little tricky. Uh, in fact, on our Thursday night match round one of it, uh, in the chat when Skull was like, we have surprises for you. I'm like, did you finally put them all into one thing? Uh, and admittedly, the surprises that night were even more fun. But at the same time, then seeing this pop up Saturday afternoon was so exciting. Oh, no, no. I can tell that they're flattened. You can, you can tell that the coloration's a little different from the vanilla palettes. But I'm glad that Skull was able to make it, make it work in a way to where they're still identifiable but they all fit on there. It, it's glorious and beautiful, and I'm so happy that uh, she and board made it made it work. Yeah, I know chat had a field day as soon as we saw it. We were very excited and very happy to see it, and I'm very appreciative to, to Scala, who does a lot of great sprite work for this game. Uh, to Fab Palettes, uh, these sprites, and a bunch of other stuff. So, Rivers, at this point, you finally forge your uh, crystal. You get the crystal in hand. What are you thinking right now? Um, <laughs> not a lot, really. I mean, I mean, it, it's all instinct at this point. You know that you have uh, a big mage party. Um, you know that you want to reflect strat. The Excalibur helps out. I can dart that. Um, but other than that, I'm just thinking... I'm kind of surprised that there's no dot done yet. I'm kind of surprised that there's not a done yet. And then I land and I think I get right into the cutscene and then there's a dot done. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, Rivers, every match that I ever play against you, I ask that question, no matter like 
how like why is there no why why is it not there yet why is it not there yet so that is that is an entire mood and uh yeah exciting match down to the wire here absolutely yeah at this point i had lost this was, this was my third loss in the bracket stage and each one of them i was either in the z fight or about to begin the z fight and at that point you're you're almost just like the 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 luck of it all just kind of weighs down on you so obviously bumming that i didn't win the race but uh you know i i didn't really play well enough to where i can be upset about it either um like i said there was probably four or five mistakes that cost me a lot of time and uh I mean, you played really well, it looked like, from what I can see. Yeah, there wasn't much difference that you could have made. I mean, Rivers, for you, just that Ogo Pogo giving you that trouble right off the bat, really, for the most part, made the difference here between um, kind of getting to the Z fight a little bit later. Otherwise, it would have been a, maybe even just a couple seconds between this match. Yeah, it could have been hyper. And I feel bad about that, at least. But, uh, um just kind of seeing everything the way it played out uh, i can't be too too upset about it um knowing like i said knowing uh, the vow reset was in there and having to go for deals knowing that i tried that grind on the flames and didn't have the blizzard there's the pogo stuff um a couple other mistakes the grind was slow and uh trying to pick up that uh extra gear uh cost me so I'm, I'm not like watching this back. It doesn't make me feel bitter that I lost at all. I can see on the film where I lost and uh, Invin's a great opponent, man. I mean, he's been working this for a long time. He does a lot of uh, grinding of seeds on uh, his channel. So, I mean, kind of give it up to the boy. He did a great job. And of course, Rivers is the reason we have this amazing game to play. He's put in the work like at the start, it was just like you and board, you and board, grinding it out, making it into something that people wanted to play, uh, not something restricted to just people with, you know, certain, you know, expertise and prior knowledge. Uh, you made it open and accessible to a huge community of people who love Final Fantasy IV and love to play this game. Uh, and I'm very overjoyed to be a part of it. Uh, and yeah, it's really fun to look at this. And Flurry again, has those great analytics on this that you can see just, you know, this little spot gives a little bit of time back, this one gives back, you know, like me double dipping lower babble, spending extra time in Fey March, uh, versus only going up ordeals, you know, the one time. Uh, and, you know, just back and forth, back and forth makes for a very exciting match. And you can see how a variety of strategies can work and pay off and how, you know, just one or two little things here and there and a race completely flips the other way. But at the same time, it's just... Ugh. It's so good. It's such a good game. It's such a good game. So, Rivers, what was your thought? I do want to know what, what you thought as soon as you saw the Z fight. You just having having finished the gauntlet to get your adamant, and then you go into Z fight, you got to fight the gauntlet again. I'm going to be honest. Um, I really, I love Scala's work. I think she is a total, can I say this word? Can I say badass on her ear? She's a total badass. I, I'm so happy that she's on the team. I'm so proud of everything she's done for both the community, the artwork, the tournaments, like everything. But in this moment, I do not give a single crap about this Z Sprite. I'm just trying to finish the game. <laughs> oh, I said, you, you, with Reflex Sats, it's. The Z Sprite's not long for this world. You're going to finish it out in just a little bit. End up taking second place. Going into that third game, how were you guys both feeling? Invin coming back, taking game two to force game three. Rivers, were you back on your heels or were you just like, okay, it's a good, you know, just a three minute loss. I'm going to bounce back. You start, Invin. <laughs> uh, I was very glad to take it to a game three. Uh, I didn't want to get, like, the main thing was I didn't want to get blank. Like, there's, there's no shame in losing to Rivers McCown. Like, if I end up, you know, taking the L, always second memes continue, I can deal with that, especially since it would be against Rivers. Uh, but at the same time, not getting fully blanked, knowing I have a chance, knowing that I can hang uh, at this level of competition. Because I fought a lot of great opponents in this tournament, but no one 
no one of River's caliber. So even knowing that, you know, I could pull off that win gave me a lot, a huge confidence boost coming into the next game. Uh, and I knew, you know, don't overthink it. Make your subtle gambles. Don't do anything too ridiculous. And uh, and you have, a, you have a shot at this. You have a shot at this. So huge confidence boost. Felt good not to get blanked. Excited to give everyone a game three. Uh, that was that was the bulk of what was going through my head at that point. And I guess for me, um, I'm always kind of uh, how can I explain? But like like a wave of exhaustion washes washes over me the longer these tournaments go. And uh, in this particular moment, I had been up at five a.m. writing uh, about the NFL draft or my day job stuff. And so at this point, I was like over the entire world. <laughs> I was ready to just take the longest nap I could possibly do. I think it wound up only being like forty minutes, but I did it anyway. And, uh, you know, you wake up and you just pick the pieces back up. You know that you made some mistakes. Um, you know your feeling on, you know, the on the match coming in is that we're pretty evenly matched. Um, you, you just kind of blank it all out and get ready to do it again. Because, you know, Invenerable is not going to be, you know, crap in the bed in the finals. <laughs> He's coming for you. Well, you guys both ran uh, one heck of a race. This was the closest of the three races in the finals. It was a great show for everybody watching, those of us who are working behind the scenes. I'm so happy I was able to be here with you guys and hear your insights on it. Thank you so much for being here. Invenerable, again, congratulations on the overall win. Rivers, GG's on your second place. Uh, Demarine, thank you so much for putting on this one review for us. Do you guys have any final thoughts? Uh, I guess just um, you know we 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 had, didn't do a whole lot of these playoff ones. I thought it was important to kind of put some some upper level thought out there as far as how the two of us play these seeds. Maybe it gives somebody some inspiration to kind of do the the work to catch up. Maybe we're like looking back, you know, two years from now as uh, maybe this discussion is something where somebody entirely new comes in and kicks our butts, and and that's really great if that happens. Um, I've really loved doing these runner reviews and also just if you have a question about routing or, or anything like that, you can come up and talk to us and we're not going to bite you. We'll try to answer your questions. Like, uh, I think there, there are, it's hard to kind of give people the, the easy one-off answer is the thing. So if you have like a specific seed question and you want to give us all the details, like, uh, this is the game that we spend a lot of time on we care about a lot and uh we're happy to help new players out if we can uh yeah to piggyback off of that uh that is one thing that you know uh, we have a great general channel and a great newbies corner but one thing that i would love to see would be just more strategical discussion in the general channel like newbies questions absolutely if you're having trouble with a boss with a fight uh seek out help but for some of these you know recurring flag sets where you're wondering about overall routing what do you think is best how to interpret things better i would love to see more of that on the discord uh rivers and i and a lot of other competitors had some really great conversations about strategy in the football gauntlet in dms and in some friends discord servers and everything but i would love to see more of that higher level strategical conceptual kind of discussion going on so break it out on on seeds you've run things that you're curious about uh no two seeds are the same, of course, but uh, that's the kind of discussion I think that we need to really take a lot of players, free enterprise, uh, to the next level. So uh, bring it, ask those questions, just get those discussions going, and uh, let's have a good time talking about this game we love. Well, again, thanks again for you two for giving us your insights. Uh, again, if you have not, please feel free to join the Discord. Uh, the link is in chat, as well as keep an eye on the Twitter account for more information on races. We currently do have two community races every week, uh, one Monday, one Friday. Uh, those information is, again, available on the Discord. Uh, for right now, we're going to send it on over to another runner of Free Enterprise, Dusty Griff, who is doing a solo Palom run. So if you want to see another high-level runner doing a lot of fun things with this game, please stick around, give him some love. Uh, feel free to give both of our runners here tonight, Invincible Rivers McCallan, a follow if you have not as well. Um, also, our wonderful restreamer, Demarine. I've been Gaming 017. Thank you so much for hanging out for this runner's review, and we will see you next time.